Today we're going to make this very snappy yet smooth zoom transition in HitFilm Express 2017 on this HitFilm Quick Dip. This is an adaptation of a process I saw demonstrated in After Effects by YouTube user TK, and it's often accredited as the Sam Colder transition. While TK used video footage in his example, I'm using a couple of photos of my daughter in a Halloween costume she made a couple years ago. As always, first thing to do is make a new composite shot. I'm going to make one over here. Call this zoom. Leave it at five seconds, the uh, standard template here. Five seconds is my default setting for my comp duration. So that should work just fine for what we're doing here. But what you want for this kind of effect is to set this duration to the length of both shots combined back to back. Okay, hit the OK down here. I'm going to drag my two clips in. So start with the wide shot first. And we'll drop the close-up right below that there. I'm going to rename these simply A and B for simplicity's sake here. So choose A for you and B for you. Now, because I'm using photos, I have to position and scale my content to fit the available space. If you're using video, you probably wouldn't need to do that step. So I'm going to move. Oop, that's not the one I want. I want my top one here. Layer A. Thank you very much. Works out pretty good. Just go about here. Well, I'll actually scale it first and make that part of the process. We'll kind of scale you down, move you up. Right about there looks good. And then for the second layer, I'll just hide the top, scale that down appropriately so that it kind of sort of fits. And uh, well, I can just grab this and. Uh, Actually, that works pretty well, even right about where it is. Um, yeah, a little bit of headspace there above her hat. Now, the next thing I want to do is set the length of each of these layers content. So I pretty much end up with a straight cut from one shot to the other. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it here about the two and a half second mark. Take the end of this clip here, trim that down so it's about there. The beginning of this one, trim that in so it's right there. And we have a straight cut right now from shot A to shot B. And now we're ready to start processing. Beginning with clip A, I want to first off set a focal point for this thing where the zoom is going to kind of push into when I start the zooming process. Uh, in this case, her face is the focal point of both shots. So I want that also be the focal point for my zoom. And the easiest way to do that is to change the anchor point for this material. So I'm going to push this over here. Slide that up there so it's right about maybe a little bit on the high portion of her face. Kind of uh, adjust a little bit there and then reset my position manually. Uh, once I've got that done, I can simply just drag and reposition that right about there. It looks pretty good. Same thing with shot B. Just move my timeline marker there. Uh, I also want that to be about the same place for hers, although it's not quite as critical for this one because the effect we're using will actually set our focal point through the effect and not necessarily through the actual anchor point of the image itself. So back over here on clip A, next thing I want to do is set some keyframes for the scale. I can expand this out, expand out the transforms, and this is going to happen eight frames away from the very end of this clip. Eight frames seems to be a pretty good time frame for this kind of an effect, but obviously play around with it and see what you like for your situation. So I'm gonna go down here and use the cursor keys there. So there's my last frame before it jumps to this. So I'm gonna go back up eight frames, right about there, and then activate scale for this. And then on the very last frame of the shot, right there, I wanted to jack up the scale quite a bit, uh, probably about 150% or so, maybe even a little bit larger. But again, we're transitioning from this shot to the other shot and kind of blending the scales of the two across that transition. So we don't have to do all the scaling in this one shot. So right around here, 150, 160% for my case uh, seems to work out pretty well. Once I got those keyframes set, I want to change their keyframe type, highlight them both there, and choose manual bezier, and then go to the value graph and play with the uh, the keyframe, the tangent handles here. So I've got a very gradual start and a very accelerated end to this transition from this value here to this value up here. So I want to just grab this and drag that down. And that will create this very kind of smooth start and then very rapid acceleration there to my final zoom position 
for this particular image. So closing that up and closing all this out. Next thing to do is to modify my image B in this case, or shot B if you're using video. Now, because her frame is her face is actually a little bit larger in this case, I do need to kind of zoom out to match the zoom effect that I'm getting coming from this shot. But because, as you probably saw in my earlier scaling operation there, I don't have much, if any, zoom out material in my image to work with. If I actually change the scale of it now, I'll end up with blank borders around the image, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to use is an effect. And there are several effects that HitFilm contains that have some kind of wrap or mirroring or reflection type of behavior to them. But the one that I'm going to use is the spherical warp effect. So I'm going to go here to the Effects tab, down to the Warp group, grab Spherical Warp, drop that onto Clip B. And obviously, this is not what I want. But thankfully, I can change these properties here for the Spherical Warp effect to get rid of the actual warp. We're not going to use the warp effect itself, only the wrapping behavior that we have down here in these two properties. So I'll take the amount all the way down to zero, which takes it back to my normal unwarped image. And then I'm going to reduce the scale down to about, I think it was 50% uh, for this. So as you can see, I've got a nice kind of reflection of things happening around this. Now, because the zoom transition is happening so fast, we won't really notice any of this kind of reflected material that I'm seeing around here, but it will kind of create the impression that we're coming from a wider available space in this image, even though we really have none. Actually, looking at what I've got now, probably 50 is a bit too much. I'm going to spin this or dial it back up here to, let's say, I don't know, 73 in this case. Again, each situation will be a little bit different depending on what you're zooming from and to where your focal point is and that kind of thing. Now, as I said earlier, we'll be setting the focal point in Clip B here by modifying this effect. And that's done in the center property here for spherical warp. So I can use this indicator here in the view or the values directly there to modify where this sits. And what I essentially want is to end up with a uh, situation where going from A to B, her face is about in the same position in the frame coming from one to the other. So it's a little higher. And I would go more so from what you actually see in the view rather than focusing on the literal position of this marker in the in the editor there. So that's a pretty good setting right there coming from that. Might go up a little bit higher, just a touch. We can kind of play with it and see how it works over time as we continue modifying the properties for this effect. So once I've got that set, I need to keyframe this position value and also keyframe the scale right here on the first frame of that shot in my timeline. And then like the other one, I'm gonna go forward eight frames and then set a new keyframe here, take my scale all the way up to 100. In this case, reset my position back to its default. So zero for that, zero for that. That way I get back to the actual framing I want for the final zoom effect of my shot. And just like we did on the other one, we're gonna change the keyframes for both the position and scale to manual Bezier. So open this up here, spherical warp, take my scale, manual Bezier, expand the center, same thing there, and play with both of those in the value graph to do the same kind of thing. Only in this case, we're not going for a gradual start and a fast end. We've just come from a fast transition from the first shot. So we want this one to start out with that same rapid feeling and then slow down. So I'm gonna take these values here, this handle on this side here, drag this down so I get that kind of rapid initial transition and then it smooths out and becomes very gradual there toward the end. You might need to grab this handle here, depending on what kind of effect you want to create. You can drag that out a little farther to exaggerate that kind of smoothing in behavior we have there. So there's position and do the same thing here for scale. So again, a rapid start. What you're really looking for is a rapid, a sharply angled beginning, whether it's up or down, depending on which curve you're modifying. And then a very smooth, more level ending going into your second keyframe. So we can scrub through this now and kind of see what the basic impression of that is. It's working out pretty well. Might want to modify the possible like the position keyframes around the value graph. It'll take some back and forth depending on what you're doing to modify the behavior of those different keyframe uh, properties and the tangent handles between position and the scale for this effect to get a nice smooth transition going from one to the other. So take some time, play with it until it looks right.
I'm going to do that and I kind of fast forward through all my uh, all my steps here. Also keep in mind that we're going to be blurring this transition as well. So it doesn't have to look exactly precise. It's all happening over a total of 16 frames. So try to get the best effect you can uh, based off of what you're doing. One thing also to keep in mind is you don't want your transition from the first shot to the second shot to have the face at the exact same size. So I'm actually going to change the scale value here and uh, increase it a little bit. So it's a little bit larger uh, coming in here. So I've got, again, a transition from, you know, small, getting bigger. It should be even bigger still on this particular frame. So I can go up a little bit more, maybe even modify my position a little bit here to kind of play with that impression. So we're going the same basic kind of direction with all this. So it's kind of coming in pretty centered on her face. I want to go a little bit farther over here maybe. I've gone down a bit too far here on my X. I'm kind of getting some overlap there. Pull that back. That actually works pretty well, I think, for the effect I'm going for. So even as a basic cut from one shot to the other, this alone would work pretty effectively. But we're going to be adding some uh, motion blur here in a couple seconds to enhance the effect and make it even more smooth. So let's turn off the value graph and we'll kind of close these out. Now, obviously, I can simply turn on motion blur alone for layer A, and that creates a very nice automatic, no other process needed motion blur coming in. But coming out of this, because the scaling's happening through an effect, it doesn't apply motion blur when I turn on this motion blur option for that layer. So I have to add the blur as a post effect, and I can simply do that in my case by dragging on the zoom blur effect. Once that's on there, I'm gonna go back here to the first frame of my shot. I'm gonna take my zoom blur down here, expand its properties to see what's going on. First thing to do is to set its center so it's about in the same place my zoom is happening the other, right around her face, forehead, right around in there. Should be good. And then increase the actual strength quite a bit for this first frame. I'm gonna turn on keyframes here and then go ahead, just three frames in this case. We don't want the zoom blur to be affected very long because we are kind of rapidly slowing out of our zoom behavior. So right around in here, I'll drop that down to zero and then also modify those keyframes, turn them to manual Bezier, and the same thing here in the value graph, exaggerate that so that it kind of rapidly tapers off here over those few frames I've added. So that works out pretty well, I think, for what I'm going for. So I'm gonna expand my zoom out here on my timeline and do a quick preview of this entire shot. And here's our result. I think that works out pretty well. Uh, and the example you saw earlier, I actually had a slight zoom or scaling set on a couple of points and, and I had each of the images parented those point layers. So you had that continuous zoom happening for the photo itself. And then that just transitioned right into the zoom for the smooth zoom effect. But in this case here, I've simply got one going to the other and it's a fairly smooth, fairly simple transition. Now, depending on the kind of footage you're using, you might, to get a little smoother effect on it. I'm just doing a straight cut from one to the other and applying these effects. But if you wanted to, you could also do a simple one, I would say a one frame overlap should be fine and use the opacity on your top layer, keyframe that so it goes to 50% on the very last frame, the frame where those two shots overlap, those two layers. And then you have a little bit of a smoothed transition there as well. As a matter of fact, that's what I did for this other shot I'm gonna show you right here. A couple uh, photographs of some roses, very different content for each shot, kind of unlike the, the similar photos I had in my earlier example. But I did use that one frame opacity overlap effect to smooth this out as well. And also in my case, used a radial blur rather than zoom blur to create that blurred transition going from one to the other. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, give it a like if you like. And until next time, Clever tagline.